while we're all talking about the teams in the divisional round of the playoffs, we will get into those games. We have to look at on the Locked On NFL podcast, the fires at, at the coaching positions across the NFL, specifically the sweeping fires that were done for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the big fire of Greg Roman with the Baltimore Ravens. What does this mean for those two offenses and what they're looking to be in the future? We'll talk about that and the divisional weekend games as here on the Locked On NFL podcast. It's the Friday edition of Locked On NFL with Chris Carter and your boy Q. Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. It's the Friday edition with Chris Carter and your boy Q of the Locked On Steelers and Locked On Raiders Podcasts. As always, you can find this show just like you find our shows on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to this channel to get all of the daily episodes that come out, not just from the Locked On NFL Podcast, but also Peacock and Williamson and all the looks that we give you around the league all week long. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidate that you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl q the week the, the divisional weekend is upon us and it continues to feel wild in the playoffs right now and then there was four right yeah. <laughs> and then there was four man oh wow. man i remember when the season got started how ju- juiced we were and fired up we were here on the locked on nfl podcast and now we're down to four games and i think it's going to be a fun weekend full of great action i'm anticipating at least three of the games being really really good with the kind of the outliner of the other game but we'll talk about that later on in the show but man excited to be with you again on another friday same here q but let's dive into two teams that made coaching decisions after they were bounced in the last round of the playoffs in the wild card weekend the Tampa Bay buccaneers got slaughtered by the by the by the cowboys the ravens put up a bigger fight than either of us thought that they were going to give against the bengals but they still let greg let go of greg roman we'll talk about roman in a bit but let's talk about the buccaneers yeah. We quickly got word that Byron Leftwich would be gone, but we saw sweeping decisions from this organization. Byron Leftwich is gone, an offensive coordinator, and they just missed five assistants, including the running back coach, Todd McNair, defensive line coach, Lori Locus, and then a few others even retired. So it looks like across the board, you're getting a lot of changes for the Buccaneers. And with Tom Brady most likely or possibly moving on after this after this year, if not retiring or whatever his decision is going to be at play at age 46, it seems like this organization, which just won a Super Bowl a few years ago, is going to go through some major changes, but with Todd Bowles at the helm. No, they are, you know, and Todd Bowles is going to be able to put his thumbprint on this organization now and really kind of make it in his own identity. If you remember when he got the job, when Bruce Arians decided to take a step back and retire, that was in March last year, right? And so there was really no time to go out and get more coaches and his own coaches. So basically everybody on that staff was retained. And then you see, it's crazy, man, the NFL, we all know it stands for not for long. There was a point where Byron Leftwich was a guy who we all thought was going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. We thought he yep. was going to be the guy instead of Doug Peterson. And now he's out looking for a job. He's sharpening up the resume, which is crazy. And another storyline that I heard coming out of Tampa Bay that has to do with this coaching, uh, all these firings that happened on Thursday is that all these coaches received uh, footballs, painted footballs on Thursday saying, hey, Back-to-back divisional champions is the first time it's ever happened in franchise history. Like, that was in their locker. And then a couple wow. hours later, it's like, all right, hey, here's your gift. And, oh, by the way, we need your key card and your playbook. You're out of here. So that's just kind of let you know how the NFL goes, that it changes quick, fast, in a hurry. But when Tom Brady, we witnessed him on Monday night, throw 66 passes. They have no run game. Uh, they don't even attempt to really run the ball. What was it, 12 total times? Uh, there's obviously uh, identify uh, identification philosophy issues going on with that organization. So they looked at the offense and they said, hey, did you do anything offensively? And the coach said, yeah, I was this guy. All right, you're out of here. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's wild, but uh, obviously there's going to be some new philosophies. I just think this, Chris, makes it basically signifies that there's no chance Tom Brady's coming back. They don't have a lot of money to play with. They don't really have a lot of talent. The offensive line is beat up. The running game was, uh, you know, nothing. And they have really currently one quarterback on uh, the roster right now since Tom Brady's going to be a free agent. If he comes back, he comes back. But I think that this basically lets it be known that TB12 will not be, if he plays next year, won't be in Tampa Bay. 
Do you think that the, these sweeping changes are because, you know, with Tom Brady being gone, there's going to have to be sweeping change. Like this is going to be nowhere yep. near the team because I, like I agree with you whooped in a video game, right? You're getting whooped in a video game. Like me and you are playing Madden and you're up like 28, nothing on me. And I'm getting frustrated. And somehow I accidentally slip and plus the press the reset button. That's what's going on. Tampa Bay. <laughs> you would do that too. If we ever, played I would, I, ain't gonna lie. That's why I, put myself, I put myself in that role. I have no problem being that guy. Did it all the time. I'll do it again. Did it all the time. <laughs> but here's the, here's the crazy part for me. Cause uh, I, I think there were some people out there that pointed out, man, Byron left, which being a scapegoat for the problems, that's kind of wild because you look at the offense. Yes, this year they ranked 25th in points scored, 15th in yards. But in every other year that he was their offensive coordinator, they were top five. They were three. They were three. Then they were two last year. And they were or 30 points a game. It was it was ridiculous. And it looked like, and like you said, just last offseason, he could have been the Jaguars head coach if it wasn't for some, you know, kerfuffles with the GM situation over there. But um when I look at when I look at Byron Leftwich and I, and I see this, I, I think that this is this might be less about him as a coach and more about as an organization. Man, we gotta we we gotta rescrap a lot of things right now, yep. and that might that means changing identities. You know, if Tom Brady's gone, that means you're passing off. It's, you're gonna have to go look for a quarterback either in the NFL draft, free agency, or start building the pieces around to kind of coddle the young quarterback that you're going to draft in the next coming years. We've seen other organizations do that. And maybe that's just part of the process, but it's just kind of a, you're right. It's a, it's a not for long league. Just not too long ago, these Buccaneers were, were, were Super Bowl champions uh, just last year. They were, they were taken out in a slug fest of a game with the, with the Los Angeles Rams who went on to win the championship. Now they're a team that finished with a losing record, but did win this did did win their division, and right. they're going to be doing even more rebuilding. I just I wonder what Todd Bowles' big plan is. What the, what's the direction he wants to take this team, and what what identity does he want this team to take with the players who are still on the roster? Well, the other question is: Is Todd Bowles a good coach? Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't know that, or at least a good mm-hmm. head coach. I think he's a good defensive coordinator. I think he's a good guy. Uh, you know, I think that he has a, a, an opportunity, but. This is probably going to buy him maybe at least a couple more years. I mean, you can't fire a guy that just won the division, right? Even though they had an underwhelming right. season, you can't fire him. Uh, but we see how the NFL is. Again, not for long, right? I mean, you do something great, good. And then all of a sudden, you're out of there. So I think this gives him an opportunity to reset. Look, they went all the way in when they got Tom Brady, and they should. They went all the way in, and they were rewarded with the Super Bowl victory. That was great. That was what they wanted. That's what they got. So now they know that, okay, it's time to hit the reset. There's not a lot of talent. Hell, I know that we talk about Antonio Brown and the and and the case that he is when he's you know not on the field and everything going on with him. When they lost him, that was a big deal. When they lost Gronk, that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. When their uh, offensive line started to go down, one guy suddenly retires at twenty something years old. That was a big deal. Now they can't run the ball. That's a big deal. Defense not very good. I mean, there were so many things that went into what happened this season. And again, and you know very well because he was in the Pittsburgh organization a long time as well. Bruce Arians taking his party upstairs and getting off the sideline is a big deal as well. So there was a lot that went into what happened with Tampa Bay this year, but I believe it's a full reset. They won't say the word rebuild, so I'll say it for them. It's a big reset. Rebuild is going on in Tampa Bay. And, and, you know, what's funny is that according to reports, you know, these these, this is not firsthand for us, but Tom Brady was the one who wanted to run the offense. Tom Brady was the one who supposedly wanted Bruce Arians upstairs and not on the field. And it seems like it's Tom Brady who made a lot of these decisions that has them where they are now and then is going to be leaving. And then it seems like a lot of people are losing their jobs because of that. And again, he's Tom Brady. He brought you a right. Super Bowl. So like yep. he gets he get he gets that. But it is kind of interesting how that has all lined up for the Buccaneers. So that's going to be interesting to see where where they go. Uh, but I do wonder. What's what it's good what the what the other teams are gonna be making moves because now there's all these offensive coaching changes across the league. And the big one I think that everyone was talking about uh on, on Thursday was the, the the change with Greg Roman being out at Baltimore. We'll talk about that and the, the path for them with Lamar Jackson in just a minute here on the Locked On NFL podcast. So don't go anywhere. But first, we got to talk to you about our sponsors at 
LinkedIn. LinkedIn, of course, is the number one place that people go to to find jobs. So if you're an employer, it's got to be the number one place for you to go to find your next hire. Go to LinkedIn Jobs and you can create a free job post in minutes to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then you just add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free terms and conditions. Apply. Back here on the Friday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast, Chris Carter, your boy Q, breaking it down for you. Let's get into the Ravens' decision to get rid of Greg Roman, at offensive coordinator. And this is another guy who had a really good track record for a few years as their OC. When he when he took over back in 2019, he, he was promoted from being their, their tight ends coach. They became the number one offense in the NFL. Lamar Jackson won an NFL MVP, and – Every, everyone was riding high, and everyone was thinking really good. 2020, they were still a top-10 offense, fin- finish, finishing seventh overall. But in the in 2021, lots of injuries, riddled with injuries. And I think that that's – we have to talk about that if we're going to talk about the, the fall of the offense. Lamar getting hurt. They had yep. no running backs that year. J.K. Dobbins. They brought in Le'Veon Bell from Celebrity yeah. Boxing to come right. be their running back. And that it didn't go well for them. This past year, they do enough to make the playoffs as the second-best team in the AFC North. But – they do they they still fall they still fall short of where they want to be offensively and now the question there's a lot of questions as far as how this organization is going to move forward is Lamar Jackson part of the plans to be the guy now according to a lot of the Ravens players they want him to be they were defending him when people were accusing Lamar Jackson of sitting out because of his contract situation saying hey that guy was limping around the facility he's our brother he'd be there for us um you know th- going over those things it does seem like the Ravens have plans to keep him in even though they haven't signed him to the long-term deal that a lot of people think that he that he deserves but if you're firing greg roman before doing that and you don't have him inked to a long-term deal contract are the ravens really going to be getting an oc that's gonna that's gonna surround that's gonna basically make everything around lamar jackson or are they gonna be looking ahead just being like you know what lamar maybe he's here for another year or two if we franchise tag him but we need to build our offense however we need to build our offense and going in a direction that's kind of like if Lamar's part of it, great, but he doesn't necessarily have to be, which to me just sounds insane thinking about all the great things that Lamar Jackson has done for the Ravens. No, it is, man. And this is a weird situation. I mean, it really is a strange situation, right? Because it's not something that you see all the time. And this offense is so catered around Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's got to be the guy there. Uh, obviously, that's what Greg Roman as the OC. He was the guy that really uh, constructed this whole offense. But Chris has never evolved, right? I mean, it's always been a really strong run game, and it's always leaned on the run game and also uh, leaned on the middle of the field as far as the tight ends go, and they've never really had too much on the outside as far as threats. Somehow, whatever the Ravens decide to do, I think this is going to tell you a lot about the plan based off of who ends up being the offensive coordinator, right? If you get somebody that you feel like can maximize the hell out of Lamar Jackson, then you think, okay, they actually do plan on holding them, keeping them around for the long haul. This whole contract situation with Lamar is so bizarre to me. I know he wants a super extreme amount of money. Uh, That's not his fault. That's the Browns' fault and Deshaun Watson's fault. And I don't blame him for wanting as much money as possible. And he wants it all fully guaranteed like Deshaun. Why not? I'm not mad at him for that at all. And, oh, by the way, he's also a guy that's had a league MVP. But he's also a guy that's missed multiple games in multiple seasons now. Right. And we just saw uh, Baltimore lose uh, last weekend during Super Wild Card weekend. If Lamar Jackson's out there, they don't lose that game. They're playing this weekend. So, I mean, there's a lot to consider here. I really, truly, in my heart, believe that he's going to play on the franchise tag this year. And then they're going to kind of try to do it again. Mm -hmm. I know they're all saying the right things, like you said. Uh, the head coach saying they want him there. Uh, the you know the GMs coming out saying that they want him there. It takes it's a two Jedi to mind trick. There. Right, exactly, exactly. A lot of Jedi mind tricks. A lot of uh, magic tricks in the backfield. I, I mean, it's just you know, it's just it's really interesting. And this is one of the more bizarre situations. A lot of them you can really kind of see the writing on the wall and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. This one is so hard to really navigate what's going to happen next. The next move for Baltimore and Lamar Jackson. 
I, I think it's going to be pivotal because it's it's crazy to me because just again, just not too long ago, we were talking about uh we were talking about Lamar Jackson being, you know, a face of the NFL with all these young yep. quarterbacks who are in the playoffs right now. We talk about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson was going to be part of this crew. And, you know, injuries may have been the biggest thing to rail. Who knows? If he's if he plays last weekend, maybe the Ravens do beat the uh the, the yeah, Bengals. Absolutely. Yep. And and and, th- and and that changes the tone there. And then we're talking about this differently right now because Greg Roman will obviously still have a job if they were still in the playoffs. But I just if, if I'm the Ravens, especially if I'm John Harbaugh, I'm like, man, that dude saved my job. Everyone knew that he was going to be out of a job in, tw- in, in 2018 until Lamar Jackson came in, carried him to the playoffs and obviously faltered there as, as a rookie. But, you know, eventually took things over and was the guy that kind of brought the Ravens back to being relevant faster than I think a lot of people thought they would with the tra- trajectory that they were on with Joe Flacco. If I'm Harbaugh, if I'm the Ravens, I'm committing to Lamar Jackson and this Greg Roman decision, if, if, if again, if this was just Chris Carter being GM and and, and working right. with president and all that, every every offensive decision goes through Lamar Jackson right now because I would be committing to him right now and saying like, hey, Lamar, you're our guy. We'll work out the contract, but who do you want as OC? Like, like, or here are our candidates that we like. Which one resonates? You know, which one resonates? He'd be sitting in on my meetings because Lamar Jackson to me is a franchise quarterback. He's not just some guy who's fast for now and is going to fizzle off in another year or two. I'm putting the investment into him being that guy. Q, am I putting too much stock into Lamar, or is this how you see the Ravens should be handling this this situation? No, it's absolutely how they should be handling. It. I mean, when's the last co- quarterback that Baltimore had that was worth the salt, right? And don't tell me Joe Flacco. He was decent, but he wasn't Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is a dynamic uh, player, right. right, on many different levels. He's a leader, man. I mean, those guys in the locker room love Lamar Jackson. That city loves Lamar Jackson. And there, there's something to be said about that. I mean, you know, right? You cover the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's mm-hmm. something to be said about being a guy that the community also rallies around. If Lamar Jackson ain't all the way Baltimore Raven, I don't know what is, right? That's like the definition of a Baltimore Raven. So he means and brings so much clout to the organization, uh, brings so much to the field, and obviously uh, just makes all the players around him better. They've just got to continue to evolve. They need to go ahead and invest in him, stop dancing, stop you know dating each other, and then all of a sudden taking a break and then dating some more. They just need to go ahead, commit, make it happen, move forward, and then figure out how you evolve that offense. Take the elements that you really like from what Greg Roman did and then expand it, make it better. What Look, Lamar Jackson has arm talent, ladies and gentlemen. He has plenty of arm talent. Put some weapons out there where he can show that off and you'll see how much even better he can be going back to what he was in the MVP season. The Ravens need to do what they haven't done in like 20 years. Draft right. an actually good wide receiver. Like exactly. if, if, if they do, if they can get Lamar Jackson that, I think that I think it changes everything about that offense and how they're looking forward. Because I like J.K. Dobbins. I love Mark Andrews. I, I, I love I love Lamar Jackson as players. If they can get them a couple playmakers at wide receiver, that can yep. quickly jaunt their way back up to being a top unit in the NFL as far as the offense. We'll see what they do, and we'll keep talking about these type of topics here on the Lockdown NFL Podcast. But pushing all the teams that are out aside. It's time to talk about the four teams that are, in, or excuse me, the eight teams that are in it. Look at me trying to get to the AFC Championship and AFC Championship week. Four games, four happens. games, brother. <laughs> four games, eight teams. We're breaking it down in just a minute here. Our picks coming up in just a minute. But first, we got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. And remember, Built Bar, we've been advertising for years as the ultimate protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. If you're trying to get in shape, but you want to keep eating things that are tasty and nice, this is where this is where Built Bar comes in. You can get 100% real chocolate covering each and every Built Bar and then amazing flavors like, like peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond, churro, and all these different things. And each flavor comes with 130 calories, so keeping the calories low, four grams of sugar, keeping your sugar low, but also packing 17 grams of protein so that you can get your gains in with each bar. But did you know that now you can get them in stores? You used to have to order them to come to your house. Now you can walk right into a local Walmart or a Sam's Club and get Built Bars. That's right. If you walk into your nearest Walmart today, you can go to their pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. They have four bar boxes of cookies and cream, double chocolate and coconut puffs. Or if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. Trust me, when you try some Built Bars, you won't regret it, and you'll be thanking me later for trying the ultimate protein bar, and that's Built Bar.
Back here on the Locked On NFL Podcast, Chris Carter, your boy Q, breaking it down. It's time to get to our picks for the weekend. And Q, just going back over, I think – I forget who all, who all we picked last week. I was going to go over what our records I were. I got everything right. That's yeah, what you, I did. You totally did not. You, 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 did, did. you didn't I have the Giants. I picked the Giants. Oh, I didn't pick the – um. No, I did. I picked the Jaguars. I sure did. So I, I got that yeah, one right. Did I did Jaguars, believe in the Chargers. Right? I did go back and check. Check the records, homeboy. I picked the Chargers. Uh, or the Jaguars, I mean. Jeez, I can't even go back over see, it. See? Um, see? See? No, he knows he's wrong, y'all. He knows he's wrong. I'm not. I guarantee. <laughs> believe me. I know I didn't pick the Chargers. Please believe that. I know that for a fact. Uh, we both picked Cincinnati to beat Baltimore. I know yeah. that. Um and then what was the other game? The well, we the both. I think Cowboys. Well, I took Cowboys. I took the Cowboys. You took the Bucks. You, I did. You didn't believe in Dak, so you weren't perfect. There you go. Right, my bad. My bad. All right, I got one wrong. <laughs> it's all good. But all those teams now moving on, and here we go. Here we are in the divisional round of the playoffs. Let's lead off with the Jaguars at Colts. And as always, when we talk about talk about these Chiefs matches, at the Chiefs, Colts at the Chiefs, or the Jaguars yeah, at the Chiefs. Look at me being – I'm trying to get ahead of my, my bet online right here. Jaguars at the Chiefs here. The Chiefs are, fi- are favored by nine points by bet online here. The money line is minus 500 for the Chiefs, plus 395 for the for the Jaguars. The Jaguars pulled off a remarkable comeback. Yeah. Also, the over-under yeah. set at 52. The Jaguars pulled off a remarkable comeback because I was feeling really good about my Chargers pick. A half of football into that game, and then they charged, and then they right. <laughs> and they right. fell apart. I, I just I feel like Andy Reid coming off a bye. Mm-hmm. The Jaguars they've had a magnificent run to get here. They turned things around mid season. Doug Peterson has got this team to believe in itself. Trevor Lawrence is playing well. All those things are great. They're about to get smacked by these guys. I, I think that they they've done enough to get here. I think they I just think they've spent all of their weapons, all of their magic to get to this point in the Chiefs. Andy Reid, the only he's only lost one time at home coming off a bye in the playoffs in his long coaching history, and that was to the Steelers in 2016. Uh, I, I think that the Jaguars are not that team right now. No, no, they're not. You know, and you got to give them a lot of credit for what they were able to pull off a week ago. I mean, look, I might have picked the Jaguars to win. Uh, that's because I had less confidence in the Chargers. But when they got down 27 nothing, I was like, well, that's an L. And it ended up <laughs> getting an L. So, I mean, it just – it is what it is. The Jaguars, you got to give them a lot of credit. I think that they're going to be a fun team coming up, especially with Calvin Ridley being added to that mix next year. I think that that's something to think about. But this magical ride for Jacksonville is going to come to an end. Kansas City is too good. They're well-rested. And they will not – take their foot off the gas if they get up early. And Trevor Lawrence better not turn the ball over like he did against uh, the Chargers because Kansas City will take advantage in a major, major way. So, yeah, I think Kansas City moves on. I don't think that's going out on a limb. But Jacksonville, I got to give them a lot of credit for the hell of the run that they had. Prop bet on this game. Do we see that the Chiefs do some ring around the rosy in the huddle the way they did uh, early in, uh, earlier this season? Uh, probably not in this Probably not this one. If they make it to the Super Bowl, I can see it coming out in the Super Bowl just because maybe by then people won't be looking for it. But that was a hell of a play that they did. I saw that up close to personal. That was at Allegiant Stadium against the Raiders. That was one hell of a play. I actually really appreciate that design by Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy. Sometimes I think that they design things just to be disrespectful, but it is effective a lot of times when they do it. Great it play. was a great play. You don't want them to do it. Stop them. You're right. I'm with you. So we're both taking the Chiefs. We don't care about the points here no. at, at, with with the, with a nine point spread. Let's go to one of my favorite games. I love NFC East rivalries. I went to Chain University, the first HBCU out near Philadelphia, and there every weekend where the Cowboys, the Giants played the Eagles, it was war between those fan bases. And I'm I, I wish I could be near Philly to to to, to just catch some of the environment that's going to be with this game because there's going to be tenacity. But the Eagles opened the game as seven and a half point favorites. The money line on Bet Online is minus three fifty plus two eighty. For the Giants, the over-under is set at 47 and a half. Q, the Eagles are coming off a bye. Crazy enough, the, the Andy Reid's former team coming coming off of a bye. Are, are they rolling over the Giants here? I think that they get the W, and it's so funny because everyone's going to focus in on Jalen Hurts. Everyone's going to focus in on A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, all the weapons that they have offensively, but I'm really going to focus on the defense. The Eagles had 70 sacks in 2022. 70. That is a lot. 7-0. That's how much... 
dominance they got from their defense. And I think that that's going to be the key in their success and their run in the playoffs. And I think it starts uh, against the Giants the third time. I know it's hard to, to beat a team three times. It's very difficult to play a team three times. That's what they're going to have to try to do on when they when they uh, host the Giants. But those 70 sacks, they just resonated in my mind like, you know what, the defense is what's going to power Philadelphia in this game. So, yeah, I think Philly gets a W, and I think you see three or four sacks on Danny Dimes, and uh, that's going to be the reason why Philadelphia wins this game. But, sir, I, I, have to, I, do, I do have to say, if we're looking at defense, the one thing that I'm not worried about with the, with the, with the Eagles is their pass rush, but the big thing I am worried about is their run defense. They have been terrible at stuffing the run this year, and that's the one thing the Giants love to do, Saquon Barkley, and even uh, even Daniel Jones is, is getting out oh, on yeah. them. Oh, yeah. I'm actually taking the Giants here. I think nice. that they're they're a hot team right now. They're playing they're playing good football. I don't think that they get to the Super Bowl, but I do think that this this Eagles team, it's gonna take them a little bit to get back into the rhythm with Jalen Hurts and, and him coming back and everything. And I think that that's gonna be just enough for the Giants run game to take over this game for Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones to kind of lead the way they, they, they chew a lot of clock and eventually the Eagles will catch on. But by then I think the Giants have a lead that they're just grinding the clock away with and the Eagles just run out of time to, to pull off their comeback. So I'll take the Giants and I'll happily take a seven and a half point spread there to kind of even out my odds there to win that bet there. Um, and I'll even take the under in this situation. A lot of the unders hit, uh, uh, all all season long. Granted, the overs started hitting in the playoffs, but I think the unders will will, will be hit. will be hitting it with with this game. So I'm going with the Giants. You're going with the Eagles. There's our first split this week uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our in our picks. Let's move along to what I think everyone considers the game of the weekend. Sunday, three p three p.m. Eastern. The Bills host the Bengals. The Bills are five and a half point favorites. They are 250 on the minus 250 on the money line, plus 210 for the Bengals money line. And the over under is set at 49. I'm taking the over there for sure, regardless of who wins this game. I've been back and forth about who I want to pick here because both of these teams, Q, we thought both of these teams would smoke the other, the opponents, the divisional opponents they faced yeah. in the last round when they had backup quarterbacks. And to me, it was alarming for both of them, but now they're both here, and they, of course, they, in their in their previous matchup, it got canceled because of the Mar Hamlin situation. Right. I, I'm going with Buffalo. I'm sticking with Buffalo because they're at home. I think that there's going to be a Demar Hamlin tribute that's going to continue to fi fi fire up the crowd, and I think that the Bengals. Their offensive line is taking some serious hits. That's gonna hurt. The, that's gonna hurt their chances to protect Joe Burrow. And I think that the Bills just have enough ammunition on both sides of the ball. But I would not be surprised if the Bengals came in and ruined Buffalo's celebration plans. I just think that this is this is always supposed to be the Bills' year. And if the Bengals' offensive line wasn't as hurt up as it was, I might be taking the Bengals. But right now, just circumstances wise, and how I saw both these teams play last weekend, I think the Bills do enough to pull it out in the end. What say you? I have no idea. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. This is the first This is the first time probably in a long time that I honestly have no idea. To me, this is going to be the most intriguing game, an interesting game all weekend long for all the storylines that you mentioned. And, you know, two really good quarterbacks, two quarterbacks that could easily be league MVPs at some point, two quarterbacks that I could see in the Super Bowl. We saw one in the Super Bowl a year ago. I mean, there's so many different things to think about. And, of course, you got the DeMar Hamlin situation. And, uh, you know, the last time we saw the game, we remember what we saw on that Monday Night Football. It's just – it's so much to – you know, really go into here. I, I feel like that 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 energy that they're going to have with the crowd and Demar Hamlin. You know, Buffalo should get the victory, uh, but I know Cincinnati has the firepower. Josh Allen. The other problem is that Josh Allen allows teams to stay in games. Like the reason why they didn't blow out the Dolphins is because he allowed them to stay in the game. He turned the ball over, and the special teams unit wasn't very good. Those were the two reasons why Buffalo damn near lost that game to Miami. So. You know, I can see the Cincinnati winning, but then the offensive line struggles that they have, like you mentioned. So I'm going to roll with Buffalo because they're at home. But honestly, I have no idea. So this is like a coin flip for me. Um, you know, they say tails never fails. I'm going to go ahead and roll with tails in that one. I'm going to roll with Bills. Uh, the one thing I will say, five and a half points is a fair spread. But I think I'd take the Bengals to cover in this game. I think that they I think they'll keep it within, you know, around a field goal range in, in this game. But I still I'm taking the Bills to win just because I think that too much is going their way. And I think the Bengals, 
they've been amazing. They, again, they haven't lost since right. Halloween. Like that's right. crazy. They've been on an insane they run. run. It, it's tough. It's tough to think that that run ends, but the Bills, I think this has been their year. They've been on the cusp for so long. And I think they need to they need to strike and they'll strike here. The Bengals year, I think it is coming though with the way that they've built the, this team so far. All right. Now to the final game of the of, of the divisional round. And that's Sunday night in a classic matchup. Yeah. I grew up in the 90s, Q. Niners Cowboys was it like like yeah. you, you and that was on everybody you had to turn on the TV and watch and the Cowboys play, play the Niners again granted in different situations bet online has this game where it's the Niners being four point favorites minus 205 is the money line for the Niners plus 175 for the Cowboys over under set at 46 and a half I, I think this is also going to look very old school because I see both teams running the football, trying to establish dominance in the ground, and trying to see who's going to force who, who's quarterback, to throw more in this game against defenses that can be very aggressive. And I think that that favors the Niners. I think they're better built for this type of game right now. The only thing that would trip trip my wire on that is that if the if the Cowboys' defense can get to Brock Purdy, because everyone's singing Brock Purdy's praises, yep. but – We've all seen quarter quarterbacks that have, have looked good, especially rookies when they're red hot. And if the if the right defense gets stu- studies you and figures out your tendencies, it can lead to some problems. If they are able to get to Brock Purdy and force some turnovers, that could be the Cowboys' key to victory. But I think that the Niners do that first to the Cowboys, and it dismantles what they're trying to do. And the Niners end up going to the NFC Championship to take on who I think will be the New York Giants. What say you, Q? I think the Cowboys are going to test Brock Purdy's stones, man. They're going to see what he's really made of, right? He hasn't really had that big-time defense play against him that really kind of put him on edge and put him, you know, get a little nervous. Micah Parsons makes people nervous. I think that that defense that the Cowboys has is really going to test Purdy and see what he's all about. I'm not saying he's not all about it, right, because he's shown so far, hasn't lost since he's been under center, so you got to give him a lot of credit for that. I actually think this game is going to be high scoring. I think this is going to go over the 46 points. Uh, I saw the 49ers give up 34 points to a backup quarterback at Jared Stidham right here mm. in Las Vegas at Allegiant mm. Stadium. Uh, got pushed to overtime. You look at the last few games that they've played, uh, they've, they've you know, been been scored on. I mean, they, they, they have – there's a little crack in the armor when it comes to the defense. It's really good, though. Uh, I think Dak Pres- Prescott's a better quarterback than Brock Purdy. Uh, I, I, think I like I like what Dak Prescott did Monday night against Tampa Bay, even though that's an inferior team. I mean, he really kind of said, I hear all the noise out there. I'm about to shut everybody up with this performance. If he could parlay a performance like that from Monday to Sunday night, then I think the Cowboys get a victory. So I'm going to go ahead and and, and go out on a, on a limb here. I'm going to roll with Dallas in this one. I know it's a short week for him. The 49ers have had two extra days of rest, but I think Dallas goes ahead and gets a victory and keeps the party rolling. And uh, we talk about them playing in the championship game. I think it could be interesting. I wouldn't be too shocked by the Cowboys winning this game because I do think that they have a good team out ahead of them. And I just – rookie quarterbacks in the playoff always scare me. It scared me a little bit last week, but I was like, they'll have enough to beat the Seahawks. I still think they have enough to beat the Cowboys, but we'll see how this plays out. Cowboys, Niners, there you have it. Q and I, we have what? We have two splits this weekend. We're both taking the Bills. Yeah, I, I got Philly. You got the Giants. We're, so we split on the NFC games, We're st- yep. and we're the same – on the AFC games. That'll that'll have it for our pick four and on our pick six this weekend because we're running out of games at the end of the year here. But as always, check out all the bet, bet, bet online, odds, news, scores, all the information that you can get there on all your betting information. Q, thank you so much for joining joining me as always for, for, for the show. It's always been, it's great being your Friday co-host each and every week, breaking things down, getting people ready for big games. Let people that can find you, follow you, get more of your work. At your boy Q254 on Twitter is where you can find everything I do. Locked on Raiders, Locked on Bets, Locked on NFL with Chris on Fridays. Uh, and just about every you know radio station I could be on in America, I try to be on. So there you go. You can always find it at, on, at your boy Q254. What you got going on, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. Q is literally on every radio show. He's he's <laughs> he's on ESPN. He's on the Raiders channel. He's he's bringing up everything all the time. And there's so many times he's big time. I mean, he's like, Chris, I can't sorry, I can't do the show right now. I got to do an ESPN show. I'm like, oh, another ESPN show, Q. Oh, but no, he's he's the man. That's why everyone know, knows that man's name around the industry. I'm Chris Carter, though. You can find me at on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. You could read my work on Pit Athletics at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You can also check out my show, Locked On Steelers, just like you check out this show and Q show. Locked on Raiders, 
Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and especially YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of our daily episodes from Lockdown NFL, as well as the, the, the Peacock Williamson Show and so much more content that we bring to NFL fans every single week. We hope that you enjoy Divisional Round Weekend. Q and I will be back previewing Conference Championship Weekend, and maybe we'll have more coaching decisions to talk about. We'll see you then to do that.